the nature of reality. Now, beloved one, I would speak with you about the nature of reality. You have a reality which you share with the brothers and sisters, a reality which says, I am activating a body. I am in a certain geographical location. It is a certain time of the day. It is a certain day of the month, etc. This is a reality which you have agreed upon. Your reality is based upon a collective core belief, first of all, as to incarnation, what it means to be incarnate within this reality, and there is a collective consciousness which defines the reality of this particular form of incarnation. In truth, the incarnation which you make for yourself within this reality is not the only form of incarnation which you can have, have had, or will have. There are many forms of incarnation. This is but one. It is called human, and it is most wonderful. It is a miracle what you bring forth in this incarnation. To coalesce light, a physical energy of light, into a certain density to form which you have then perceived with physical receptors known as the eyes. Even as you look upon brothers and sisters, all of the forms, although human, are different. Some are very much alike, the ones which you call the identical siblings, identical twins. But even those ones the parents can tell apart, for there are differences, much the same as you acknowledge that every snowflake is different. Most wonderful miracle! You call forth from your creativity within the collective agreement of physicality a certain form to play with in a lifetime. You coalesce light into a certain density of vibration which allows you movement sensation. You play with this certain form for a lifetime, and then by choice you recycle and incarnate again if you want to, in human form or another type of incarnation. Some of the forms which you activate in other dimensions, other realities, are very different from the density of this form. Some are as light as gossamer, much as you would call your certain emanations of ghosts. Some are quite fluid, as you understand the liquid form to be as it flows. It has certain form, but it is more amorphous than what you see this density of form to be. You, as the holy child, have brought forth in your universes many realities where there are life forms, some similar to what you activate here on our Holy Mother the Earth, some which are dissimilar, some forms which live within the planets, some within the stars, some which live within the non-space between the bodies in the universe. There will come a time, if you see yourself yet to be activating human form, when you will have expanded sensory capability to know and communicate with the forms which are in the space and the non-space between bodies. So as you can see from this slight introduction, there are many realities, small r, this one being one that you have agreed you will play with. The collective consciousness called human says there will be certain physical laws which govern how the incarnated bodies work and how everything else with which you populate your world will work in conjunction and in connection with the physical body. For example, the chairs that you put the body upon are energy coalesced into form at a different vibratory rate so that you can sit upon them. The same with your dwelling place. You have certain walls, and if you want to walk through the transparent wall, otherwise known as a sliding glass door, you find that it is difficult within the collective agreement to walk through that transparent wall. Something about vibratory rate is different. You learn at a very young age what the physical laws are that govern the human incarnation, and your perception of the laws defines your reality, the small r. You have, first of all, within the collective consciousness and the collective agreement, a broad reality that you function within. Within that broad reality, you have other realities, sub-realities defined by culture and society. You learn as a small one from the close family, the parents, and the siblings what the agreed-upon reality is as you are growing in stature and wisdom. The shared reality of family varies, as you have seen, from family to family. And when there is an intermarriage of one family with another one, there is hopefully a marriage of realities. Oftentimes this requires a bit of a judgment, trying to fit two similar but not the same realities together. You have a shared reality of the family. You have a shared reality with the parents, with the siblings, and with the playmates as you are growing a bit taller. You have a shared reality in the schooling, whatever you take your schooling. All of this shared reality defines your reality and how you see it. Within your own individual reality, there is much that defines it according to your perception of what you have experienced within the collective consciousness, within the family group, within the interaction with siblings and playmates, within your interaction with so-called authority figures, your perception of how you have functioned and do function in relation to others in this shared reality. Your individual reality is defined by your beliefs and perceptions, 
collective and individual, throughout this lifetime and other lifetimes as well. For when the small one agrees to incarnate and comes as the infant, this one comes already with memories, already with certain issues that they desire to play with, to know intimately, and to see in holiness eventually or perhaps sooner in a lifetime. Every small one, as you have witnessed, comes with a different set of memories from other lifetimes which shape from the very first moment the reality of that one. Those of you who have witnessed siblings within a family and have seen the small ones at birth and shortly thereafter as they were growing, you see that no two are alike. Even the ones that we spoke of that would be the identical siblings are not the same in appearance, in form, and they are not the same with regard to personality and perception of their reality, and this becomes even more defined as time goes on. Your reality has many aspects, components which shape it, define it, and it is being shaped and defined moment by moment. It is a work in progress, open to improv every moment. All of a sudden you get a revelation of what seemed a moment previous to be a very true, small t reality, small r, is seen a bit differently, and you have a new reality for yourself. Your reality, small r, is what you make it. Now you have the saying that you make your own reality, and you do. You shape it moment by moment based on your beliefs, core beliefs, which you share with the collective consciousness, and beliefs which you have brought with you for many lifetimes about what it means to be human, what it means for you individually to be human. And your reality is based upon specific individual beliefs which you hold in a certain lifetime. So when you have something coming up in your reality, ask of yourself, what is the belief that supports this? It is a belief that I gained from my parents, from my grandparents, from my playmates, from society. Where does this belief come from? Why do I believe it? Begin to be very aware of your reality and the underlying beliefs. It will give you revelation. It will give you opportunity to know freedom. For you will begin to see how your reality, small r, has been shaped down through the ages by what you have, up to this point in your reality called outside forces, and yet if you will begin to examine those outside forces, you will see that you have agreed to every one of them because you have agreed to the Incarnation. You will see that by that agreement you are part of the collective which is said. We will play within a certain sandbox together, and we will have certain rules about how we play in this sandbox. You have agreed that you will play for a time just for the fun of it, just for the creativity of it, to see what you can make a sandbox itself. For truly, in the reality of the sandbox is not set. It is open to improv by the Holy Child. Now, regarding some of the core beliefs, you say, Well, I can't change those. As long as I am going to be incarnate, there are certain core beliefs about what it means to be incarnate that I have agreed to. This is true momentarily, but there is also an evolution of the reality that is going on, so that in time, and it will not be that long a time, the ones incarnating will look at what they call reality now and will have a different view of what human incarnation means. I will allow you to contemplate that thought, beloved one. So be it.